Hello, welcome. Thank you for joining me. My name is Lauren and we are going to be moving through a fitness class uh, where we're going to do a lot of upper body stuff standing when we come down to the mat for the second half of the sequence. We are going to be doing a lot of abs. For this sequence, you will need some form of resistance. Weights will work for most of them uh, with probably only one exception. Um, otherwise, I'll be using a band. You're welcome to, uh, if you've got a band that doesn't necessarily have the handles, that's okay. You can just grab onto the bands themselves, like the ones you you know you get in physical therapy, the TheraBands. Those are fine too, uh, but you will need some form of resistance for this, uh, for this workout. So, but you can set that off to the side. We need to warm up first. Uh, we're gonna start by just marching. So when you are warming up before you do any type of workout, especially resistance training with its weights, bands, whatever, BOSU, whatever, you've got to be moving and moving your whole body, move to the point where your heart rate gets elevated, your breath might be a little labored, you might even start to sweat early on. That's good, that's what we want. We want all of those things coming up. Now, when you're thinking about what you want to do, like if what we're about to do in this warm up, you think, oh, I don't want to do that, I don't want to have to do whatever, hamstring curls, whatever. You just want to make sure that you're moving, moving as many spaces as you can, making the movements large, and then also varying the movement. So it wouldn't be appropriate to just do this for five minutes, right? So we're gonna change up the movement. So I'm not really particular about the warm up itself. These are just some ideas that you can move around. Okay, let's stay here for four, three, two, one. Let's come to a high knee march. And so when you're warming up, the warm up should be at least five minutes long. It should be longer, closer to eight to 10 minutes if it's first thing in the morning and you are not as mobile and not as warmed up and or if you um, are new to working out. If this is something new and your body's not really used to all these movements, you've got to give it a longer time to get warmed up. So five to eight minutes is good for most of us. Some of us need eight to 10. Okay, we're gonna spend about five minutes though. So you're gonna stand up tall, lift your knees, lift your arms. You're gonna keep this movement happening, but now at a rotation. So now you're turning and twisting at your waist like you're reaching your elbow across your body for your opposite knee. It won't touch, that's not the point. Let's stay here for four, three, two, one, come to hamstring curls. So now, you're gonna keep your knees low, but bend your knees, get your heels up to the backs of your thighs. Lift your chest, relax your shoulders, and pump the arms. So again, the sequence we'll be moving through today is a lot of upper body when we're standing, which is about the first half, and then a lot of abs once we come down to the mat, the second half. So we need to warm up the shoulders. So let the arms come out wide, like you're reaching your elbows back, like you're trying to get your elbows to touch behind your back. We're gonna come to that later. Relax the shoulders away from the ears. Keep getting the feet up, heels up. Kick the backs of your thighs. Stay for four. Three, two, one, let's come to squats. So lower, lift, lower, lift. So feet are about hip distance apart, maybe a little bit wider, but not necessarily mat distance. Your feet look like the number 11. All 10 toes point forward. Your weight is back in your heels. You can wiggle your toes. Your back is flat, chest is lifted. Arms relax, do whatever you want with your arms. Doesn't matter, just relax them. Let's do four more, three more, two, one. Now we're gonna keep up the squat, but we're gonna lean. So you're gonna lift and lean over to one side, tapping the tip of your big toe down onto the ground. As you lift, point your toes. As you lift, point the toes. Really come into strong plantar flexion in the ankle. So you're still moving through the squat, Sitting your hips back, not just down, but down and back, and you lift up. Let's see two more each side. One more each side, keep breathing. Now we're gonna pick up the pace, turn it to a bob and weave. So it's down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. So you are still tapping the tip of the big toe down to the ground, coming into plantar flexion in the ankle. Hinging at the knee, 
pinching at the hip. So you're sitting down and back, chest stays long and flat. I'm sorry, spine stays long and flat, chest stays lifted. Shoulders relax, arms in front of you like a boxer. And now add a cross, a strong, swift, powerful jab, punching across towards the two opposite ends of the room, towards the sides of the room. Now forward, twist, turn, rotate in your spine. Really punch through the knuckles and try to relax the shoulders away from the ears. Stay with it for four. Stay with it for three. You got it for two. One more. Come back to a march. Okay, so stand up tall again. Here, breath might be labored. Heart rate might be up. You might be sweating. What we want in the beginning. So then we know joints are protected. Muscles are engaged. So now you can move through these exercises in a much safer way. Okay, keep moving your feet, but swing your arms forward and back. Cross right over left, left over right. And try to keep your torso still. So instead of swinging in your torso, just swing your arms. Stay for three, two, take deep breaths. One more. Okay, all right, we are gonna get started. So here's where you need either the band or the weights. I'm gonna set a timer and my watch will beep every minute and 15 seconds. If you can't hear it, I will make sure to be cueing it. We're coming to bicep curls though. So if you've got the band, you're gonna step on it with either one foot or two. Two is harder. So your call, you're gonna turn your palms so they face forward, glue the elbows to the ribs, curl, release, curl, release. Now, when you're at home, you've got limited resources. So maybe the band or the weights you have are too much. You're welcome to alternate. Just do one and the other. And you're more than welcome to do that. So you need to make this workout, even though I'm telling you what to do, customize it to your body. So that might mean curling with both arms. That might be stepping on it with one foot, whatever you need. Because all of these movements, whenever you're working out, strength training, resistance training, whatever, cardio even, you should be feeling like you are challenging yourself. You're working hard, you're putting forth the effort, but you're able to breathe, you're able to stay focused, to stay in good form. So you wanna make sure that the band isn't snapping your hands down or the weight isn't dropping your hands to the floor because you don't get stronger. Three, two, one. Okay, so now if you've got a band, you're gonna step on it with both feet. We're coming to an upright row. You can easily do this with weights as well, but you're gonna bring the weights or the handles together. Close both hands around both handles. Your backs of the hands will face forward. Knuckles will point down. So if you're wearing rings, they'll point towards your feet. You're gonna stand up tall, relax your shoulders, lift and lower, lift and lower. This is an upright row. We're gonna do several versions of rows. This is the first one, this is an upright row. So you're lifting the band up by your chin and then slowly lowering it down. Don't let the band snap your arms down. Lift with control, lower with control. So again, resistance training, strength training, you feel like you're working hard. Your arms, your shoulders, and hopefully your upper back all feel like they're working hard, but you're able to stay with it. You've got 20 more seconds. You can continue to lengthen your spine. You can take deep breaths. You can move in this smooth, fluid way. You feel like your muscles fatiguing, but nothing is sharp, shooting, or painful. That is crucial to remember that. If you feel something sharp, shooting, or painful, you need to stop what you're doing. Three, two, one. Okay, now we're gonna come to a shoulder and oblique exercise. If you've got a band, you're gonna step on it with your right foot, just your right foot. Take your feet wide, about mat distance, if you were on your mat the other way. About mat distance, toes point forward. Now option one is to grab both handles. This is gonna be harder. Or just take the one by your pinky toe. Take the outside one. Either way, it's both hands. They come down to the right, up at a diagonal to the left. If you've got a weight, you could do this with just a weight in your hand. But you are going to keep your arms straight. It's like you're making one half of the letter X. I often see students sort of do this bending elbow thing. Arms stay straight. Like you're again, tracing the letter X, one half of the letter X and you are lifting up. You're gonna get into your shoulders when you're up high, but you are twisting at your waist. Legs stay still. Notice that my legs don't twist with me. My knees are bent to make sure that they are active. 
The weight is back in my heels and my kneecaps and my belly button continue pointing forward, even though my upper body rotates. Then we know you're getting into your obliques into your side abs. Now we'll do that once we're on the floor. Might as well do it here too. Okay, switch sides. You're gonna step on the band with your left foot. Feet wide, about mat distance, toes forward. They look like the number 11. You can take both handles, that's gonna be harder. Or just take the one by your pinky toe. But both hands come down to the left, keep the arms straight, come up at a diagonal to the right. Down to the left, up to the right. So it's not bending at the elbows. You wanna keep the arms straight and you move like you're tracing the other half of the letter X. Your weight is in your heels. You can wiggle your toes. You've got a soft bend in your knees. Firm up your legs. Legs should not twist with you throughout this action. One, that puts stress on the knee. Two, the obliques do not do any work then. And we want them to work. So make sure that you're rotating at your waist like you would wring out a dirty washcloth. Wring it out at your waist and your spine and your torso. At your narrowest point, make it even narrower. And arms are gonna feel this work as you lift up and overhead. Maybe you don't lift up that high if you've got an issue with your shoulder, but we wanna make sure that the rotation is still happening there. Okay, we're gonna to come to another row, bent over row here. Easily, you could do this with weights. So you're gonna step on the band with both feet. You're gonna keep your back flat, soft bend in the knees, tip forward. Notice that my back is still flat. I'm not rounding, I'm not slouching. That's counterproductive for this exercise. Lengthen your spine. Now, you could just hold on lower at the band or wrap your hands around it, but reach elbows to the sky and slowly release. Elbows to the sky, slowly release. We're coming to a bent over row. We already did an upright row where we were bringing the handles to our chin. Now, we're bringing the elbows to the ceiling, the handles by the ribs. So, step one, reach the elbows up. Step two, squeeze in like you're trying to get your elbows to touch behind your back. Really squeeze and contract as you draw up and towards the ceiling, but also in towards the spine. So keeping the back flat, lifting your chest. You should feel this in your upper back, not your lower back. Like I can feel like I was starting to feel it in my lower back. So I tuck my tailbone, lengthen my lower back, and it feels much better. So spine is long, chest is lifted. Three, two, one. One. All right, now we're gonna to come to a tricep exercise. So you're gonna hold some part of the band or weight in your right hand. You can hold the handle. I like to hold the actual band itself, but it's your call. You're gonna bring it behind your head. Your elbow should point forward. It's gonna to wanna to splay out, draw it in. Your other hand comes down at sort of your mid back, grabs onto the band, and then pull it down. That arm, that left arm is gonna stay there. Glue the back of your hand to your spine and kick the right arm up and lower. Right arm up and lower. So you can do this with a weight in your hand. If you've got a weight in your hand, you might wanna use this hand to sort of hold and support this arm to make sure that this stays still. Whether you're doing it with the band or the weight, this part of the arm, the upper arm bone, where you actually feel the work in your triceps, it has to stay still. The more the whole arm moves, the less this works. The work always happens at the muscle just beyond the joint that's moving. We want this joint to move, this muscle to work. But if the whole thing moves, it's not gonna be enough work for the tricep. So keep it in tight, lift it up, three, two, one, switch sides. So holding it in your left hand, you can hold the, the handle, that's fine, or the weight, or the colored part. You're gonna bring it behind your head, elbow points in, other hand comes about under your shoulder blades, pull it down, keep it there, back of the hand glued to the spine, kick the left arm up and lower, left arm up and lower. So elbow points forward, elbow is the only joint that moves, so it's not a wrist action and it's not a shoulder action. So just hinge at the elbow. Now oftentimes with this, people end up in a back bend. So draw your ribs in, tuck your tailbone, Lengthen your spine. Push your heels into the floor. You should be able to wiggle your toes. You've got a soft bend in your knees. That's gonna help you tuck the tailbone a little bit more. Okay, and again, you're just hinging at this elbow joint. 
the shoulder stays still, the wrist doesn't take on any of the work. You should feel this in your triceps, in the back of your upper arm. You've got 12 more seconds. And then we're gonna come to a lat pull down. This one's pretty tough to do with hand weights. If you have hand weights, just do a shoulder press or a shoulder raise, which would look like this. If you've got weights in your hands, you just do a shoulder press. But if you've got the band, we're gonna come to a lat pull down. So you're gonna grab onto the band, Wrap it around your hands. Make sure you wrap it around the space between your pointer finger and your thumb by this webbing. Not down here, that's gonna rub and be really uncomfortable. It doesn't have to be symmetrical. I do two on one, three on the other. Arms will come up overhead. You look like a capital Y. Relax your shoulders, keep your arms straight. Reach out so you look like the letter T, bring it back together. Reach arms out, letter T, bring it back, letter Y. So you come out and in using the muscles of your upper back. Now, listening to your shoulders, you might bring the band behind your head and keep it close by, bring it behind the head, or bring it in front of your face. Doesn't matter, but we want it close by. So we don't want it coming way too far forward or way too far back. So only dropping the arms so they're parallel to the floor. And truly, you look like the letter T. And then back up, keeping the band close. Squeeze your upper back. So draw your shoulder blades in toward each other. Think about creating wrinkles in your shirt back between the shoulder blades. Okay, we are gonna come back to the band, set it down, but here we're gonna come to a wall sit. So if you don't have wall space close by, just you're gonna take a sort of imaginary wall sit, imaginary chair pose. I'm gonna just come right here. So feet are hip distance apart, toes forward. You're gonna lower down. Now, if you were to see me from the side, the hope is that my knees make a right angle, my hips make a right angle. Shins are vertical, thighs are horizontal. So it's hopefully a series of straight lines and right angles. This is kind of uncomfortable. I'm gonna move here. Okay, so you're low enough to the floor. A lot of times people don't sit low enough. So low to the floor. Imagine if you were to place a rolling pin on your thighs, would it roll off? You wanna lower the hips so that it would stay level. Okay, so you're pushing your heels into the ground. Oftentimes when we do this pose in shoes, our feet sort of slide to the toes and then our toes sort of ball up. Push the heels down, really fire up the quads. These muscles here that are really working hard, that right now are really firm, quads. Three, two, one. We are gonna come down to the floor. So we're gonna start with a seated row. If you, excuse me, if you have weights instead of bands, you would probably come back to a bent over row and then just meet us on the floor in a moment. But seated row, <coughs> excuse me, you're gonna wrap the band under the bottoms of your feet at your arches and then cross the bands over. Oh, I'm sorry, I did that backwards. Ah, oh, that's so funny, I never do that. Place it by the tops of your feet where your shoelaces go. I didn't think that felt right when I started to cue it. And then cross it by the arches. So it goes all the way around your feet, okay? Lengthen your legs, point your toes away from you, sit up tall, you might have to grab onto that band itself and row. Reach your elbows back, sit up tall. So from the side, you look like a capital L. You're not leaning, you're not slouching, you're sitting up tall. Now, if you're familiar with a row machine, we often move the torso as we do that, but that's because you're hooked up to the machine, that's different. We're not moving the torso. Keep your torso still. You look, again, like a, the letter L, a capital L from the side. Three, two, one. Huh, barely felt anything, we barely got into it. Okay, set the band off to the side, we are done. We're focusing on abs. So, from right where you're at, bend your knees, heels on the ground, hands to the backs of the thighs, sit up tall, you guessed it, V-sit. So, leaning back, lifting your feet up, Feet together, flex, and lift them up. Don't let them hover over the floor. Lift your ankles to the height of your knees. Your thigh, I'm sorry, your shins are parallel with the floor. Flex the feet, lift the feet up, bring the feet together. Now lift your chest, broaden your collarbones, relax your throat, neck, and jaw. Oftentimes people in this pose, they reach their chin to the ceiling. Reach the crown of your head, way up here, up towards the sky. 
you might even release your arms and reach your fingertips forward. Now, just because you can doesn't mean you should. For me, as soon as I release my arms, I feel my hip flexors do 98% of the work, which is not what we want. So your hip flexors might chime in a little bit, but we want your abs to do most of the work. So lift your chest, relax your shoulders, soften your arms and hands. You've got four, three, two, one. We're gonna come to a side plank. So I'm gonna come onto my right side. We obviously have to do both, but on your side, you can come onto your hand, you can come onto your elbow. It makes no difference to me. One is not easier, one is not harder. But you could drop the bottom knee down and lengthen the top leg. You could do this and any leg variation with either arm variation. Now this is a modified side plank. Make sure that the knee isn't under the hip. We don't want your thigh a straight line up and down. We don't want it a vertical line. We want it in line with the rest of your body. You could stay here. You could lengthen both legs, heel, toe, heel, toe. You could lengthen both legs, one foot stacked on top of the other. This is the hardest option. Now again, any of these you could do on either your elbow or your hand. Makes no difference to me, okay? Now you're gonna keep your hips lifted, your spine a straight line, don't let them sag, don't let them hike. Hand can be at the hip, fingers can reach to the sky. But soften your throat, neck, and jaw. That might mean looking down, forward, or up, but I want you to take a deep breath. We're here for five seconds, and you're gonna come onto your stomach. Three, two, one. Okay, come onto your stomach. We're gonna come to a traditional plank. So actually, really starting in tabletop. So same thing, you could be on your hands or your elbows. You could be on your knees or your toes. So with the arms, one is not harder, one is not easier, but being on your knees is easier. Being on your toes is harder. So you choose where you wanna be. Now, if you're on your elbows, now your biceps have to work, but you are more stable. So that's the difference. Now, if you're on your elbows, you're gonna push your forearms into the floor. You're gonna relax your hands. You can do what you want with your hands, but relax your hands. Now you're gonna keep reaching the crown of your head forward and your tailbone back, your heels back. Now planks, very often, like wall sits, are mind over matter. You can do this. If something is sharpshooting or painful, get out of it. But if it's just your abs shaking, your arms feeling tired, the front side of your body saying that they're tired, push through it eight more seconds, and then we are gonna come flat onto our stomach. You got it. You're almost there, three, two, one. All right, flat all the way down onto your stomach. Okay, reach your fingertips forward, your toes back, palms can face the floor or each other, whatever you like. But you're gonna lower your head and neck. You might even rest your forehead on the floor, but you are looking at the floor. We're gonna relax the legs, lift the upper body, lower the upper body. Lift, hands, arms, head, neck, and shoulders. Lower down. Lift, lower, lift, lower. Now, you'll feel this in your mid and your lower back. If you want to feel more, you might lift your legs as well. Lifting everything up and lowering down. Now, make sure it's not too fast. Lift, hold, lower, hold. Lift, hold, lower, hold. It's slow. It's controlled. You are moving in a thoughtful way. You've only got 15 more seconds here with this exercise. And then we certainly are doing another side plank on the opposite side. I'll be on my left and I'll turn around so I'm still facing you. Three, two, one. Okay, so I'm gonna turn around but you can stay where you're at. You probably don't necessarily need to face me for this. Wouldn't be such a bad thing, this is my bad shoulder, I might have to take a rest. <laughs> okay, so you could be on your hand, you could be on your elbow, you could let the knee come to the floor, you can lengthen both legs, you can do heel toe, you can stack the feet, whatever you need to do, okay, to keep the hips in line. So the hope is that from the crown of my head down to at least my knees, I'm a straight line. We don't wanna hike up, we don't wanna let the hips sag, a straight line. Now, one step further, we don't want to fall towards the floor. So, 
Square your hips and your shoulders one on top of the other. So from a bird's eye view, your, your for me, my left shoulder and hip would disappear. So I'm not shining up towards the ceiling. I'm not falling down towards the floor. I'm keeping everything stacked. We've got 15 more seconds and we're gonna come onto our back. We've got four exercises there and then we stretch. We are so close, so stay with it. Keep breathing. You've got six, five, four, three, two, one. All right, come on down onto your back. We're gonna come to toe touches. Now, this one you could do with a weight in your hand. If you're new to this exercise, skip the weight. And if you've got a weight, then you know it. You wanna try it harder, you can. But feet come up overhead, feet together, legs are long, legs do not move. Oftentimes in this exercise, the legs start to swing forward and back. They should not do that. Imagine your heels are resting on a wall and they stay there. Arms come up, reach for your toes. Lift your head, neck, and shoulders off the ground. Reach, 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 and lower down. Lift, reach, reach, reach for your toes. Slowly lower down. Now I want you to feel this in your abs. If you feel this in your back, feet on the floor. If you feel this in your back, put your feet on the floor. Otherwise, feet up, long, together. They stay still. Oftentimes, students deceive themselves into thinking, oh, Touching my toes isn't that hard because they're bringing their feet to their hands. I want your legs to stay still, ankles over the, the hips, and you reach. You probably will not touch your toes. That's more a reflection of your flexibility, less about your strength. I don't care about that right now. Three, two, one. Whew. All right, bridge pose. We're gonna come back into the lower back again. Feet and knees, hip distance. Feet flat, knees bent, arms alongside the body, palms down. Tuck your tailbone, push your ribs into the floor, lifting just the tips of your sit bones, and then lift a little more, lift a little more, lift a little more, come to the top. We're gonna hold it at the top. So push your feet firmly into the floor, the heels and the ball mounts of the feet, but not necessarily the toes. Make sure that the knees don't knock in or splay out. Knees are hip distance just like the hips and just like the feet. So lift your hips up. Now lifting your hips up is gonna work your lower back and your hamstrings, the backs of your thighs, but we want your glutes engaged. So squeeze, actively contract and squeeze and engage in your glutes. Really pinch, pinch, pinch your backside together. Keep pushing heels down, hips up, glutes in, relax your shoulders, relax your throat, neck, and jaw. Just eight more seconds here. Lift the hips, pinch the glutes, keep contracting these muscles. Three, two, one. All right. Now this one, you're going to, again, arms alongside the body, feet come up overhead. I like feet together and legs straight, but it's okay if those things don't sort of stay throughout the movement. Now you're gonna keep your upper body still and lift your lower body, reverse crunches. Lift your legs up like you're gonna stamp footprints on the ceiling. So the ceiling, not the wall behind you. Your feet should not come over your face. That's like shoulder stand, that's not what we're doing. We're reaching up, think about up. Jackknife straight up towards the ceiling. I like feet together. If they fall away, that's all right. It's a little more stable with them together. But you might push your hands down to lift your hips up. Then your arms are doing some work. You might relax your arms, let them float or whatever you need to do. So you know your abs are doing the work. Your back should not be doing the work. Abs, front side of the body, contract in the front. Relax shoulders. You've got 12 more seconds. We've got one more exercise after this. Notice that you feel this in your upper abs, above your belly button by the ribs. We're gonna do lower abs in a minute. Three, two, one. Last exercise. Hands come underneath you, palms down. You're supporting your lower back. You're not, your hands are not on your lower back. Sit on your hands so that your lower back falls closer to the floor. Feet up overhead, push the ribs down. Create a wrinkle in the front of your shirt by your belly button. That is so important here. Keep the right leg long as it lowers, hovers over the floor, lift it back up. Left leg, let it lower, hover over the floor, 
bring it back up. Now, ribs down, spine down, lower back down. There should be no space between your lower back and the floor. If there is, your lower back is vulnerable and it's probably gonna hurt. So I want you to feel this in your lower abs below your belly button. If this is not hard enough, you could scissor kick your legs, one leg lowers, other one lifts, or feet together. But ribs stay down, contract your low abs, below your belly button, below the waistband of your pants. Relax your shoulders, just 10 more seconds here. Then we're gonna stretch. So keep the movement slow, keep it controlled. You started strong, finish strong. Three, two, one. All right, take a full body stretch, reach your fingers and toes in opposite directions. Now it's okay if there's a space between your lower back and the floor. Think about really expanding and lengthening, like you're drawing your belly button towards your feet, but your heart towards your hands. Really open through the front of the body. So from the side, your spine looks like a rainbow shape. Take a little bit of a back bend. One more breath. Okay, and then you can relax your ribs, bend your knees, bring your feet flat onto the floor. Bring your right ankle to the top of your left thigh. Make sure that you're resting on your thigh, not your knee. Softly flex your right foot to protect your knee. You can stay here, but the hope is that you feel a stretch in your right glute. So you might lift your left leg up, bring your hands to the back of your left thigh. Sorry, there's a, okay. <laughs> bring your hands to the back of your left thigh and hug your left thigh in. If your left foot comes up off the ground, softly flex that foot. Now draw the left thigh in. And even though you're hugging the thigh in, can you relax your shoulders? Can you let your shoulder blades fall heavy on the mat? And let your ears, I'm sorry, let your shoulders fall away from your ears. So shoulders away from the ears and shoulders towards the floor. So down and back. Down and back is tough to say when you're upside down though, when you're laying on your back. Okay, stay for one more breath. Okay. Keep your legs as they are, just release the left, I'm sorry, release the hands from the left thigh. Close the gap between your thighs. So cross your right leg all the way over your left. Hug your thighs in and grab onto opposite shins, ankles, or feet. If you're grabbing onto the feet, keep the feet flexed. So now you're gonna feel a stretch in a space that is a little different, potentially a little foreign. This is more your outer hip, outer glute, outer thigh, along the lines of the IT band. And this gets pretty tight on people. This space is really challenging to stretch, so it doesn't get stretched very often. But just notice what you're feeling. Remember that even when you're stretching, especially when you're stretching, these movements should be comfortable. You can feel a lot. I can feel, this is a deep stretch, but I can breathe. I'm not clenching my jaw. I'm not making a face. I'm not wincing. I'm not thinking out. Those are signals that you are pushing way too far. I certainly can feel this, but it feels good. It feels productive. It feels beneficial. Take a breath here. Now keep your legs as they are, just release your hands, let your arms come out in opposite directions, palms up. Let the left foot come back down onto the ground, right leg is still crossed, we're staying on the same side. Scoot your hips two to three inches over to the right, let your legs fall to the left. Oh, my lower back just cracked, it always does in this one. It feels so good. All right, so make sure that your right shoulder feels heavy on the floor. We don't want it lifted and floating because this is a lot of pressure in the shoulder, in the part of the shoulder that's already really vulnerable and very tight. So the shoulder blade should come down onto the floor. Okay, backs of the hands heavy on the floor. Now, if this is too much in your hip and in your spine, you can uncross your legs and just stack them or keep them crossed your call, but I want you to feel a twist in your spine. Remember when we were doing those wood chops where you were drawing that one half of the letter X and then the other half of the letter X? We wanna take that rotation, that again, wringing out your waist like you would a dirty washcloth, but in a very passive way. So active 
engages and strengthens the obliques. Now we want to just stretch and release the obliques. Stay for a deep breath. And then slowly return your legs back to the center. Uncross your legs, recenter your hips so your spine is back to a long line. Take a breath. All right, and we'll start at the top. So bring your left ankle to the top of your right thigh. Softly flex your left foot, protect your left knee. You can stay here. You're probably not feeling very much though. So you might hug your right thigh in, bring your hands to the back of your right thigh. You could hug onto your shin too. This is sort of uncomfortable on my arm, so I don't like that variation, but there's nothing wrong with it. You absolutely can do that. Now, flex your feet softly. Hug the thigh in, but relax the shoulders. So again, shoulders away from the ears and down towards the floor. Make sure the back of your head is heavy on the ground. We wanna make sure that we're not um, really reaching to grab onto the thigh to the point where the head comes up off the ground. The head should be heavy. The spine and torso should be heavy. If you don't comfortably grab onto some part of your leg, you could always use a towel or a strap, or I can't really demonstrate this right now, but your right foot could be resting on the wall and you could scoot closer to the wall to push in. Or if you live with someone, have them push your uh, right foot in towards your body. I've done it sometimes in classes. It, it's hard to describe, not that I'm trying to do it, but it's possible to do this with a friend. Okay, take a breath. All right, keep your legs as they are, or just release the hands. Cross the left leg all the way over. There's no more of a space between your thighs. Your thighs are totally stacked. It's like you're sitting in a chair. Thighs into the belly, feet in opposite direction. Grab onto ankles, shins, feet. If you grab onto feet, flex the feet. Now, your two sides are different. This side is much tighter for me. So notice what you're feeling. You might have to kind of back off. Like I think I'm gonna have to back off a little bit. So we want a comfortable stretch. Again, nothing that makes you wince, make a face, or think ow. And I was on the border of doing all of those things just a moment ago. And so you've really got to put your ego aside, not just with stretching, but with weight training as well. Because even with weight training, even if you're lifting heavy weights at the gym or on your own, whatever, you should not be thinking out and you should not be holding your breath. Uh, I, I really struggle going to gyms because I see people doing all of those things um, and I have to stop myself from intervening. <laughs> but you should be feeling like you're working, absolutely but not where you feel so disconnected and so strained like that. Take a breath here, feeling comfortable. Okay, release your hands, arms come out in opposite directions, palms up. Let the right foot come back down onto the ground, left leg is still crossed over. Scoot your hips two to three inches to the left. Let your legs fall all the way over to the right. My lower back cracked again. Okay, so you can uncross your legs, you can keep them crossed, but we want the left shoulder down. Your left shoulder blade should be making contact with the floor. If it's lifting up like this, you've got to change some part of the legs, whether that means uncrossing or whatever, because the shoulder needs to be down. If it's up a little bit, like if you can feel your shirt sort of brush against the floor, that's okay. We're avoiding this though, where I could put like a whole fist or yoga block under the shoulder. That's not good for the shoulder. So feel that stretch through the outer hip, outer thigh. Feel that passive stretch in through the obliques and the spine and take a deep breath. And then slowly return the legs back to the center. Uncross the legs, recenter the hips, let everything come back to neutral. So from up overhead, your spine is a straight line. Take a deep breath. And then inhale, exhale, hug your knees into your chest, maybe rock from side to side. Maybe point and flex your feet. Do some ankle circles, especially if you are not moving a lot at home. Like for me, I'm spending a lot of time sitting. 
move even your, wiggle your toes, point and flex your feet, move your ankles, move through your wrists and fingers, move these spaces that are probably getting tight that you don't even realize are getting tight. Okay, last movement, if it feels good, if it feels productive, beneficial, doesn't make you hold your breath, doesn't make you make a face, hug your chin into your chest, your thighs into your chest, and rock and roll along the length of your spine. This has a few intentions here. We're massaging the length of your spine to break up any tension and building more flexibility and mobility. So it should feel good. Don't push through it if it doesn't. Do this two or three more times. This is like rolling like a ball in Pilates, a version of it. And then eventually come up to a seat. And you are all set. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, for those of you who take my abs class at McFetridge, you're used to an hour long class. This is the exact same sequence we've done at McFetridge. We just did it once through. Um, so you're welcome to restart the video and do it all over again if that's what you want to do. I'm done. <laughs> but you're welcome to make this workout an hour long. Um, it is your body, your call, your workout. Just make sure you are listening to your body and that goes all the time, no matter what you're doing. So have a fantastic day. Thank you so much. And I hope to see you in real life soon. Bye.